What's up, guys? It is Dan from Fight Wave, and today I'm joined by somebody who I've been dying to speak with for quite some time now. He and I both know this was at least a year, year and a half in the making. It's been a long time since we've finally been able to get this one underway, and today I'm super <laughs> excited to say I've got, in my opinion, one of the most influential bantamweights in the Australian regional circuit right now. Somebody who has faced anybody and everybody they've put in front of him. Somebody who does not shy away from a challenge. Somebody who's fought across the world. He's fought on one's Warrior Series. He's fought anywhere you can imagine more importantly he's a great person a great fighter and somebody i look forward to speaking with for the next half hour or so today i'm joined by alan true ali phil pot how are we doing today brother hey brother how's it going finally we get to get this one underway alan and man i've got to say after what was a bombshell announcement by eternal mma that you'll be fighting rod costa at eternal 82 an unbelievable uh, you know sequence of events just to see that fight get announced i imagine you're over the moon to finally be able to punch rod's face in talk to me about how everything's been and how you're feeling yeah man though no, definitely no that this was the plan originally um no we whenever rod just disappeared after his last fight after he said that he wanted the winner um you know he got bashed obviously i dominated echo and echo gave him a hard time the previous fight he he, he wasn't ready and they, he can use any excuses as he wants. He said he had a bad back, bro, but I, I heard on like a Tuesday he had a bad back, but yet the Saturday had a grappling fight. So he's just been a little bitch. I, maybe his coaches didn't believe in him enough. Like that's There's a lot that could have went on there, but all he had to come out and do was say that, look, I'm not ready to go, but wait February, fine. Give up the title, don't hold the division. But no, I ended up, obviously, I asked for Paul Logan, and got that fight and then on Fortunately, I got sick and had to pull out for the first time in my 15-year career. But, um, yeah, so we're back on track. Fucking, and I'm very, very excited to beat Rod. Uh, you know, like, this is a massive step forward. A goal of mine was to get the Eternal title um, since I've signed for them. You know, I'm, I'm, obviously, things weren't working out. I fell away. Um, had to make a few adjustments, change my team and stuff, and... No, now we're back on track, and yeah, I'm, I'm pretty keen and G'd up for this one. No, yeah, absolutely, and more importantly, this was your first camp with Lions then in the fight versus Sean Etchell. You looked phenomenal in your return to Bantamweight, I might say. You know, 1-0 as a Bantamweight since your return, and you looked unbelievable. You know, even to some, jokingly saying you netted not only a, a TKO finish, but also a submission victory in the process. <laughs> you know, talk to me about just how you felt at 135, because I feel like for the longest time, you know, even you were kind of head scratching at the idea of continuing to fight at 45. It just wasn't the weight class for you yeah. to exceed your expectations. And you know your skill set capabilities where they lie. Talk to me just about that experience of returning to Bantamweight and finding the success that you did in your return against Sean Etchell. Um, for me, bro, it's not uh, the, the the main reason for getting back down to Bantamweight was the discipline and the focus, the mental side. Um, you no, know, 45, I didn't feel like outpowered or outstrengthed or, or even outskilled. I mean, like they were stronger, of course. They, they are strong boys. They were bigger. I was on the smaller scale of the fillers, but no, I wasn't like a tiny filler. Um, I still had to cut a bit of weight and to get there. But no, it was easy. Um, the camps were easier. No, I, I just felt that now that I'm going back to Bantamweight, it made me remember what I used to do and how I used to be and no, my best performances were always at one three five. I was advised against it for a couple of years too. No, I was working with different nutritionists and the strength coach and stuff, and they were like, "No, like you put this size on now, you're growing in the filler. No, a couple more, you'll be a proper filler." But I just, like I say, bro, I just felt like it was just there was something missing. So I thought, you know what, let's just try it again. It's going to be hard, but I'll do it. Um, but no, nah, smash, smash the camp. Going back home was good to re, you know, readjust myself, connect with my roots, train with the boys back home, and you no, know, and even when I went to UFC London, being around um, when I went with Josh, like. All the staff and stuff, the, the the governing body for over there, they they looked after all the shows I was coming up and you know, we're walking through the USC with Josh and everybody's walking up to me and hugging me and it made me remember who I was and where I came from and like what got me my name and what got me to where I was. So I was just like, right, let's just fucking go again. It's, whatever I'm doing now is not working. So I had to change my team, get a, a, a new coach, um, no, and I, no, I feel that was a massive part of it too. Like I, I was having confidence going in there because of the coaching I was getting, and yeah, one three five is definitely my my place to be. 
No, yeah, absolutely. And more importantly, I've got to highlight, you know, moving over from Igor MMA to Lions Den, obviously personal decisions, whatever the case was there. I don't want to dive too deep into it. But more importantly, I've got to highlight what a tremendous choice you've made in the form of training at Lions Den Academy in Sydney, Australia. You know, in my opinion, cream of the crop, some of the best up and coming young talent out of that gym. You know, you look at it from pro to amateur you've got amazing guys just this upcoming weekend at the time of this recording you've got leo katsiaris fighting nathaniel law for the xfc amateur welterweight championship you've got george magos who's doing great things at 145 chris ustajanovsky joe davis you've got michael stanoff unfortunate his last result but more importantly i feel like the culture at lions den academy is you know breeding killers and you look at yourself and fellow teammate from igor's ben patterson you guys both went over there and have begun training there talk to me just about immersing yourself in that environment being able to train with some of the best up-and-coming talent in australia and you know being able to kind of re-recognize some of your former self and being able to train with these guys yeah like i say bro though like i'm these are all young killers coming through like and they, they're they're dominating on the scene they dominated the amateur scene um no i've been watching them coming through and i'm watching them what they're doing and you know i've I, like where i was compared to what they're doing is like it's a totally different level and i was just like i knew i, I wasn't going to progress or get any further where i was so i needed that change and like like you said bro like i honestly feel that lion's den's the the biggest prospect team in australia i mean like and they're already smashing and they but they're all young and fucking under five fights and like under five pro fights or whatever and no, like they're they're looking like season pros out there, and bro, like the training is top drawer. Like, no, no, looks very invested as a coach. He's a very good, knowledgeable coach. He's actually went in there and done it. No, like a lot of these coaches have maybe had one or two fights, few kickboxing fights, and a few jets come soon, whatever. And like, no, that's where they were. But looks, he was the MMA guy. Like, he was the OG of, of Sydney. And, no, we had all them shows over the years, and. So and I and he, I also well, the biggest thing was when I went there like it reminded me of my gym back home when I started like the way Luke coaches and the style of things is the same as my coach the way the way he gets on and no that that was massive for me because since being in Australia we never I never really found that it was more like I was trying to create it I was trying to like build it between the like, my coaches and teammates and no I felt like I was always trying to get that and it was just never there never there. Where when I went to Lions, then the, the connection was just there straight away. And you no, know, I never told any of the boys to leave Igor's and to come with me. I went myself to do the to finish my camp. And and then whenever they decided they wanted to leave, I, I said, Look, use, it's up to you. You just need to talk to the coaches, whatever. Like, I'm not out here being a coach anymore. I'm out here to fight, like, and train. And, like, you no, know, it's not like I'm not guiding you or doing anything. Like, when you're out there, it's on you. And you no, know, like, it's a Ben. Um, Patterson obviously he left for personal reasons. Brandon White he's been with me from the start and he was like like wherever you go I go because you no know, I was the one that got him started and helped him and I was like I, I was like well that's on you that's your choice I was like no obviously I'm I'm buzzing that the the boys have came over um but at the same time you know I'm I'm just glad that they made the choice for their own reasons and they're thriving there too bro and like like I said they. Like, you you mentioned the the pros, but see the amateurs coming through. Like there's a lot of they've only debuted there the other week, man. They were knocking people out in seconds and submitting people and putting on dominant performances. And bro, like they're doing that stuff to us in the gym. Like like every round in that gym is challenging, and that's why I need it, bro. I need that. I needed that where no and Igor's. I only had Josh. Do you know what I mean? There was no one else. Literally no one else. There's. Like, nobody could do anything there. I was getting away with stuff that I would never get away with now. So, definitely, definitely the right, right choice to make. And I'm very positive moving forward and confident that, you know, I, and look helps me believe in all my abilities and doesn't it just make me a striker or, you know, which was the, the problem in the past too. No, I've, most of my wins are also missions, but yeah, um, I had a coach that was like, making me believe I didn't have jiu-jitsu. You know, tell me I didn't have jiu-jitsu and stuff and you know, all this stuff that got air, but yet none of the students could do anything anyway. And then I went there and the next thing I'm back, looks like helping me get the game plan with Edge. I was taking him down early. I was taking people down the end of the round and he was like, take them down at the start of the round when you're fresh. So I right, sweet, let's do it. So I started doing that. 
And they were in that fight, bro. I never had to question anything. I knew that if on the feet, I'm there. If we can do wrestles, I'm there. And if we go grappling, I'm there. I think that's why I need going forward. I need that confidence. And you no, know, and I was getting that um, confidence from my coaches. What what's got me over the line? So definitely the right choice. No, yeah, definitely. And you mentioned, you know, personal reasons, more importantly, fighting for yourself and really like not trying to force the, the culture around you, but going somewhere <clears> where you know you can excel by working within their system, not just trying to build the environment, but more or less immersing yourself in yeah. an environment. And at Lions Den, I feel like the culture they've got is one that, you know, like you mentioned, from top to bottom, you've got guys coming up, you've got guys excelling. You know, George Wongos, I think, is going to be a household name yeah. come a year or two time across Australian MMA and, you know, even the greater world. You know, you look at you look yeah, at what, he's, the, he's what they're do doing that, there. Bro. He's like 20 years old. Like, he just turned 20 there a few months ago. And like I say, bro, he's, he's a little monster, man. And he's a good person, too, a good kid. You know, he just he, he's disciplined. He's focused. No, he, he family man. Got everyone loves him. So he's he's ticked all the boxes. And he's funny, man. He, like he, when you get to know him, that there's another side to him, and it's good. Like you need that. No, yeah, definitely. And more importantly, I feel like the experience you bring to that room, and I feel like what they bring uh, for you, you just in terms of quality training, like you mentioned, being able to train with guys that have had that ringside, that they've had that cage experience, they've fought several times in the amateurs and pros, and like you mentioned keeping you accountable i feel like accountability in mma is is something that makes or breaks fighters if like you mentioned you're getting away with positions in, in training that you shouldn't be getting away with you know paying the price for those positions it's a very important thing and i feel like what they bring to you just in terms of quality rounds and what you bring to them in terms of a wealth of experience you know you've got over 35 yeah. professional fights uh you know as a fighter and just that those are the ones that are only recorded i can't even imagine you know the the, the multitude of fights that you've had just not as not as a professional mixed martial artist yeah. you know kickboxing muay thai you name it i feel like you bring that experience so talk to me just about you know the wealth of experience that you bring because at 31 years of age you've got over 35 fights as a pro mixed martial artist and i feel like you know, you've seen it all in terms of the octagon. You fought all across the world. Talk to me just about that journey of being able to fight as frequently as you have and being able to to kind of see it, all of what mixed martial arts has to offer fighting globally and also fighting, you know, right now in Australia as frequently as you have. Yeah, well, that was that was one of the main things, bro. Is like, no, obviously moving to a new gym and stuff. Like, they, them boys all grew up together. Like, they've all got that team network like and of course I'm more experienced and I'm, I'm at the, the the top of the chains where they're only coming through so but the main thing was like they they were as excited for me coming to help because I've got this experience as I was getting there and like that was that was the cherry on top really like no one ever because I spoke to the boys and I got to know them through the local scene and that and like no there's always that better respect there and so like no they always give a good vibe even at all the shows even when we fought their boys they were always respectful so it was like no that that was easy um but no having having that experience is like i am older now like I'm, i am getting to the, the last ha part of my career i would say like the next five six years like that's all i've got left i guess to be serious i don't want to be doing it any longer than that anyway to be honest like I'm start, I've, I've accepted, like, no, I've had a mad career. I've got loads of good experiences, but I don't want to do this forever. Um, there's a lot of other avenues I want to do and live life a bit as well because the fighter life's hard, bro. Um, learned, doing, having all them fights and experience and being in it for so long, it has helped me grow and evolve with the sport as it's evolved. Um, you know, definitely doing things a lot more different and advise people who do different than what I've done, and they you know that's where it comes in. Like the boys, when they're doing the weight cuts, or you know, if they get offered fights and such and such, like they, they can talk to me about it, and I can give them that experience. And I'll just the thing is, I give them my experience past my, my past experiences. I don't just like say things without knowing. Do you know what I mean? I've tried and done it all. That's what I tell. If there's something to happen or go wrong in a camp or leading up to the fight whether well, it's like missing weight or whatever I've done everything wrong like I've done it all wrong and I've got this far which excites me because now I believe that now I have done all that I've, I've done like a full circle and now I'm at Lions Den with all these young killers like it's making me it's the oh, shit it's, oh, it's not like I'm starting again but I've got all that experience all that knowledge all them years of mine and then and, and learning from the, the OGs where now I'm getting 
now I'm getting the evolve again with the, the new breed. Um, so no, I've got it coming from both both angles. So yeah, it's good. Definitely, though, it's been a fun career so far. But now it's not to be being serious and you know picking the right fights at the right times and doing things just a little bit right. And you know that's why like the logo fight not happening it was probably a blessing in disguise because. No, I had a very bad neck injury, but my ego was getting the better of me, and it was the old Alan Philpott. It was like anyone, anytime, prepared or not. You know what I mean? Where that could have jeopardised me. Like if I went in there, got caught, because look, it was obviously decent enough to do that, but you know, I was still confident I would have punched the head off him anyway. But no, if that if that would have happened, that was me back to square one, where I needed to be a bit more smarter and about my decision making, and you know so. Yeah, the experience has definitely helped and it's going to help me help them other guys. No, yeah, definitely. And like you mentioned, breaking that cycle, you know, you look at the you look at the four fight losing skid you had leading up to the actual fight. You know, like you mentioned, that old uh, old Phil Pop mentality that you had, which was, you know, just anyone, anywhere, anytime. It doesn't matter. I feel like, you know, this shows a maturity mm-hmm. in not just your fight game, but in, in yourself to be able to be, you know, taking the, the measured steps. And like you said, having people around you who've not only done it, but ha- yourself having done it so much. I feel like it, it goes back to what you said a little bit earlier, which was when you went back to, you know, you, when you went back to, the you know, England and you, when you went back to, to Northern Ireland for a bit, spent some time there w- with the family and friends, kind of rediscovering your why in this sport. I feel like oftentimes uh, fighters kind of lose themselves and just looking to fight or make it to a big show or whatnot, that they lose sight yeah. of why they do it and why they started. And, you know, you look at yourself fighting across the world more importantly you know what really drew me to your story was you know your time on the one warrior series i feel like that was something that really got me you know invested in you as a fighter seeing why you do it seeing the impact that your family has had on you in this sport just what they've made your what your what your your mother and sister have meant for you it, it, it was it was a very touching story and i wanted to ask you just in terms of going back to to the roots and why you started fighting and also, just being a great ambassador for Northern Ireland MMA, I feel like there's nobody really out of Northern Ireland that's done it like Alan Philpott, gone across the world, shown that it can be done. You know, you paved the way, really, for Northern Ireland fighters and even even the Irish fighters. I know there's a little bit of, you know, quote, history there. We won't get too much into it. But, you know, I know for you, it probably means the world to be able to trailblaze and lead lead the pack show. It can be done. So talk to me just about... You know, not just being revitalized and having your family come to you and just being able to speak with them and come back a stronger fighter and get the victory, but also what it means for you to be such a a big ambassador for Northern Ireland mixed martial arts. Yeah, no, like that's that's one of the main things is like, no, in the past I was doing it for everyone else. And, and like, and really I should have been doing it for me because when I do it for me, the better I get, which means I can help everybody else. And that was the that was the problem. Uh, I was just focused on doing it for everyone else but me. So no, that that changed a lot. And uh, the time of the Bomb Warrior series, I was basically my own MMA coach. I was just traveling all around different gyms, trying to get sparring and training, which was good, but it wasn't learning or didn't have anyone really guide me. I just had Johnny, my striking coach. And then that's why my striking really excelled and you no know, grappling sort of fell behind then because you know, I wasn't getting anyone to help me fix my holes. So you know, that's going going to Igor did help that a lot, you know, a lot of little details that we went on and you know, that's when things started coming together again. But you know, like I said, just it took that extra step to get the final piece. But going on to the Northern Ireland thing, you no, know, it's important for me because like you say, I have been the one doing it all. Um, I also come from a very shit area where it's like very negative and no one's got much drive or much hope. Like, you no, know, it's basically just like zombies. They're just sort of surviving and getting by. And you know, if if somebody from the town can go out and make something of themselves and you know and prove to the next generation that you don't have to just be stay there and stuck there and live the life that your elders or that everyone else is living, no, like have ambition, go go chase them goals. It's not easy. It's very very hard. But, you know, it can be a very fun and exciting and rewarding thing to do as well. And, like, that's where we're at now. Like, you know, I know, proving to myself that I can be that kid that went and done something. And then by me doing that, I can help all those others and they'll help give people some future dreams as well to follow. And I'll you know, be a role model. And, like I've said, I've done some bad things in my time as well. So if I can right the wrongs and, you know, make my family proud and friends and, you know, but 
come on to this earth to do something good to help other people. Well, then I'm I'm that's that's happy. I'm happy with that. Like my career has been good. No, yeah, definitely. I love what you say, and more importantly, it's not about where you start; it's about where you finish. And I feel like throughout that's, your that's career, it, we've seen you time and time again defy people who have kind of you know, shown that, you know, oh, it's the end of the road or been naysayers or doubters. You've proved the doubters wrong time and time again. And more importantly, I feel like for you, just seeing what you've done, you know, you fought, like you said, across the world and basically being your own coach, being your own influence in this sport, you know, at times when nobody believed in you, you believed in yourself. And that's the most rewarding part about it all. Just talk to me about, you know, now you look at everyone, the supporters that you've amassed. You know, you've got over 10,000 people on Instagram following. You've got a massive army of supporters, I think, in my opinion. Yeah. Just talk to me about being able to fight globally and see support anywhere you go. From fighting in your early days on Bama, fighting for the One Warrior Series, to now fighting on Eternal and, you know, being one of the more recognizable names amongst the promotion. What does that mean for you to just see the support that you have and be able to show, you know, Alan Philpott has got quite a backing behind him. You know, you you guys don't know yeah. what you're getting into just yet. Yeah, no, that that's obviously a big part of it too. Like I thrive off the crowd too, and the energy and stuff. Uh, with the One Warrior series, it was before the whole COVID and no crowds thing, but they didn't have crowds then. Like that's what they done. It was just like you know, there were a few business people in the crowd. Um, I sort of liked it at the time. I thought, oh, this is good, the martial arts way, and they you know. Then it was only whenever I came back and fought in front of a crowd, I realized, like, nah, it's totally different. Like that's not for me. I need, I need to cry. I like the, the energy. I like the fry off a well, of me going into enemy territory, and they've got a massive crowd going against me, or if it's me, and I've got a big crowd there, which I usually always do. So you know, I, I just love it. You know, I mean, that's that's definitely gives you a little boost. Um, that's why it's sorry, I guess a wee bit harder when you do lose because you feel you let so many people down, especially when they come and pay money and shit. And you no, know, they they're out there supporting you, but no, then they they're supporting me. They're not supporting the win. So that's that was the biggest thing. It was realized that no matter what, with the results, is the people still love you the same. It doesn't it doesn't affect you. Um, it doesn't affect your relationship with them. They don't think any less of you. That and you no, know, being ha being able to have so many loyal people, especially coming off the free losses and stuff, and you know. Like it was a bit doubting like oh maybe I'm not going to get people want to come and watch me people like, I have had people as, as well like you know, relationships and stuff not worked out because they thought maybe I should um, start looking for jobs and stuff as well and though for me it was like nah I need that I need that support that moral support so having a crowd and having support there and like you say coming the other side of the world and like have you seen my fight with HL man the crowd was insane do you know what I mean and that's why like like these fighters all try and be something and they're not. Do you know what I mean? They're all trying to be like the McGregors and stuff and they're not some people just don't have it. No, they get I'm 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 me. I've always been the way I am and I'll always be the way I am. And you know, that's that's what helps get people too, because at the end of the day, even if people don't want me to win, they're gonna still come and watch because nothing satisfying than watching some you don't like get beat up. Or the other case is they're coming to watch me beat someone up. So I still put bums on seats and yeah, it's you no, know, they definitely definitely thrive off the crowd and it's very appreciated. Like you say, over here on the other side of the world, it gets very lonely and you miss your friends and family and especially in fight camp, the emotions go up and down and you know you're you're stepping away from people because you're you're deep. You need your focus and you can't be going out drinking and even eating out and stuff. So you know, like I say, it gets lonely and then you turn up to a fight and there's a lot of fifty to hundred people there screaming your name, going mad, and you know, it's it's. it's so that's a nice feeling bro yeah absolutely and i feel like like you mentioned that when you're isolated halfway across the world from home being able to fight in front of a sold out crowd of friends family and supporters it means nothing but the world and i can imagine when you go over to perth for eternal 82 when you face rod costa that crowd is going to be full of alan philpott supporters alan i want to thank you so much for your time the privilege to speak with yeah, you man. and yeah, you know appreciate just, it and i just wanted to you know highlight the impact that you've had on this sport, I think, is immeasurable. I always love to say, you know, when you look at fighters like yourself who've who've built something from nothing, pretty much, you know, you you came in and you showed it can be done. Just a, a young kid when you first started from Northern Ireland, traveling the world, looking to make this thing stick and land and stick and land, you've made it do. I, you know, I've got to highlight that. You know, your tremendous determination, willpower to make this thing happen. Regardless of it, if it was on your terms or not at times, you always push through and you made it happen. So I wanted to give you your props there. Obviously, you've got a massive, 
you know, a massive, I think, hyped matchup in the form of Rod Costa next. Yeah. The, the trash talk on Instagram might be some of the most entertaining trash talk I think I've ever seen between two fighters. You know, kickstarting 2024 with a bank. This is a two-parter question. One, obviously with a win over Rod Costa, you become the A-side in the Australian Bantamweight division, becoming eternal Bantamweight champion. Talk to me, one, about what that means for you to become Bantamweight champion and the goals for 2024 off that. And also just, you know, how do you want Alan Philpott to be remembered in this sport when it's all said and done? When those six and seven years left in this sport come to a close, how do you want to be remembered amongst this sport and amongst your peers? Yeah, well, first of all, beat, like, beating Rod and, and getting that eternal title, like I stated before, that's that's been a massive goal. Um, I'd be even more satisfying beating Rod because I know he's massively underestimated me because of my last grappling uh, experiences. So that that's gonna be really nice whenever he tries to grab on. I grab on. I'm smashing his head in, and um, Miller on the floor on the feet. And to be honest, bro, I, like the only reason this is gonna hit the floor at grab all tall is if I wanted to. Like, it's a massive cage. There's no one he has ever faced at my level of striking. Um, so that's that's a massive bonus on my side. It's, it's at the end of the day, it's everything against him as well. He's in Perth. He's got the title. You know, he, he's. He's old. He's older. He's no. He's it's, it's everything. It's in his hometown. His family and friends are going to be there. No, he's got that number one ranking spot. So like, for me to come in here, just swip that all from him, and I'm going to do it in absolute classic fashion. It's going to be hard for him, and I can guarantee you, bro. Like, no, I'm going to put an absolute clinic on him that I haven't put on anyone before. And um, so that's going to be good. No, it was five years ago. I fought my first Australian. I was on ACB and. Um, which was the third biggest show in the world at the time after Bellator and UFC. I fought Gustavo Falsaroli. He was the man, bro. He was fucking, he fought Bibiano Fernandez on the one, for the one championship final. He beat everyone on the local scene. He's beat Kai Car France twice. No, Richie Fass. He's beat all the boy. He was the man. I mean, I absolutely schooled him. Like, then you have to go your first, first gear. Black belt, took him down loads. He's a probably better black belt than what Rod is. Uh, Rod's still very good. No one, I'll give him credit. Like his jiu-jitsu is great, probably the best and one of the best in um, the eternal promotion. But like, my MMA is a lot better, and it's going to be what cancels him out. Um, so yeah, that's that's going to be massive for me, bro. Taking that title, getting that number one spot back because, like I say, it's five years ago I had it. And then you no, know, for me, I want to go PFL, bro. Obviously, if UFC come as well, but PFL is really. Where I want to go, I like what they're doing. You no, know, they're doing a lot more shows, and like Ireland and stuff. And now they've joined with Bellator. Bellator do Irish shows, and you no, know, <clears throat> getting back to Northern Ireland's the goal. You no, know, to get on a big show back in Northern Ireland, that's what we want. So if I could get on one of them promotions, get one or two, get good wins, keep that hype going, and then they'll get get back to Belfast, get a main event spot, or even a co and you no, know, get that. In Belfast, that's that would be ideal, bro. That'd be that's that's what we want. So get that get that strap in February, you no, know, and then move on to the big leagues if we can. And like I say, I'm pretty confident that after I beat Rod that you no, know, it's just gonna be up from there. No, yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned PFL Australia. I cannot wait for the PFL to come to Australia. It would be an absolutely phenomenal scene to see, you know, just the surplus of talent across Australia and MMA get be given the chance to fight at the highest level. And Alan, you know, I'll be tuning it's in. It's needed over here, bro. It's definitely needed over here. Like there is a market for a big promotion here and you know it's it's good. It's it's a good step forward for Australian MMA. No, yeah, I couldn't agree more. You know, I think Australian MMA needs something to kind of push it, put you know the, the promotions there a little bit on the edge, you know, make them kind of work a little bit harder. I feel like that's kind of needed a little bit. But more importantly, you know, your matchup against Rod Costa is going to have fans, uh, you know, it's going to put butts to seats. It's going to be one that everyone's going to tune in for. I think, I you know, I, I don't think I've been this excited for a regional seat promotion. In terms of build-up and trash talk since, you know, you look at Michael Mono versus Emrahan Hekimoglu, that was in and of its own right. But That's boring about me. He's just a wee fake cunt that we Turkish person that thinks he's a Dagestani wrestler, man, he punched the head off him. Do you know what I mean? Like these cunts are fake, bro. Do you know what I mean? They're not real. That's the thing about it. They're 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 barks bigger than their bite, and like it's the same as Costa. Like, he's not. He's he's talking like as if I, like the only reason he came back online was when I came out sick, saying I'm scared to fight and I'm pissy. Like if there's anyone that's not scared to fight, it's me. 
Yeah, let's be serious. You don't get my even the promoters were messing me saying like that you don't get that many fights and and no if you if you're a pull out so like they know. Do you know what I mean? Bear in mind he's pulled out numerous times and he dodged me, literally dodged me. So you know, he's got no legs to stand on. And when I get in there and punch the absolute head off him in February, he's gonna be like I, I bro, I'd be surprised he doesn't retire. Because after that, he's nowhere to go. Like he's never going to get the title back. No, he's he's never going to get the UFC. He's older. No, that's it. I'm taking the title. And I'm taking his number one spot in his backyard. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I can't. I cannot wait that's for this bad, matchup. Bad, bad. That's a bad night for Rod Costa. Absolutely, I, I can't wait to watch that matchup. I know I'm going to be excited to watch and tune in and see you and Rod Costa go head to head. You know, Alan, thank you so much for your time. You know, it's been a privilege to finally sit here and speak with you, get to pick your brain. And I feel like you've done a great job in Australian MMA for Northern Ireland MMA. I feel like, you know, if you know Alan Philpa, you know you're going to get some of the best fights in the world, more importantly. So keep up the amazing work. To the fans at home watching, do be sure to check out Alan Philpa versus Rod Costa at Eternal82. Check out Alan Philpa on social media. I'll be linking his socials in the description down below. Huge thanks to our sponsors that make this possible. It's been me, Dan, from Fight Wave. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed. Do be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and have a great day, guys.